Come on, Alaska Airlines. Really? How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about Alaska Airlines offering passengers on the door plug fiasco flight a very small amount of money for their pain and suffering. Now, we're going to get to that amount in a minute. But first things first. If I was a passenger on this flight, I'm going to sue their pants totally off. Their pants are going to pop off the same way that door popped off mid-flight. Oh, I'm going to say my life flashed for my eyes, and I thought it was going to be the end. I was calling my mama and my daddy talking about I ain't going to make it, sending my last request, telling my family I loved them. Oh, man, look, we're going all the way up. We're going all the way up. Now, I'm not just trying to be greedy. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not just trying to be greedy, but come on. Really? An experience like that, which ultimately probably boils down to negligence? Oh, yeah, I'm going to sue your whole pants off. Now, before we get to the dollar amount that they were offered, let's look at what happened. Now, video, no sound. I'll link to it in the box. You see what's happening. The door popped off of the flight at 16,000 feet. That is, what, three miles above the Earth's surface. 16,000 feet, the door popped off. And by the grace of God, nobody was sitting right there because there are seats right next to that particular door because the door was not being used as an exit at that time. So thank God nobody was sitting right there. Now, if somebody was sitting right there and wound up getting deleted, oh, my goodness. If that happened, we're talking about a whole different story here. A whole different story. So they found a door, by the way, in the school teacher's backyard in Oregon. But there were no boats found, which may mean that there were no boats in the door assembly at all before the door popped off. Now, you see something like that at 16,000 feet? That's traumatizing. And let's get to what they were offered. Do you see that dollar amount right there? Do you see that? Alaska Airlines offers passengers mere $1,500 for horror flight as potential lawsuits loom. $1,500. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If passengers accept that amount of money, I think that they are not going to be able to sue. You probably got to sign something that says we will not pursue any litigation against Alaska Airlines or Boeing or whoever. You take this money, you can't sue. Now, I know some are going to take the 1500 They may need the money right away. They may have bills. They may have whatever. And I'm not going to judge anybody who takes that money. I'm not going to judge them. But if it's ABL and I'm on the flight and they're offering me 1500 man, I'd be like, <laughs> you're going to talk to my lawyer. And for real, you probably can get some lawyers that will work on contingency. And meaning they may work for free up front. But I take a piece of the back end. Okay, I'll see your case. I won't charge anything. There won't be a retainer. But when you win a settlement, which you are going to win a settlement from these people, it may take a while, but I'm going to get, let's say, 30% of the back end, 20% of the back end. I'm going to sue 100%. But let's look at the article to see what it says. Passengers on board the Alaska Airlines flight that lost its door plug mid-flight will offer a paltry $1,500 for the terrifying ordeal, but an attorney believes they're in a prime position to bring lawsuits against the airline for a larger amount. Of course, of course, $1,500, you're talking about STEMI money. You're talking about PPP low-end money at best. Man, please, I'm going for 1.5 M's. I'm going for, one, I'm going for 1 1.5 M's, and that's kind of a conservative amount. Oh, absolutely. I'm going for 1.5, especially if I was right by the door and I was in any kind of way injured, a scratch, a bruise. Man, look, if I saw the door pop off, if I saw the cockpit door, because remember, this door was at like row 23. So 22 rows above that, you have the cockpit in front of the airplane and the reinforced cockpit, cockpit door flew off when the door plug popped off. 
So if I see something like that, man, look, I'm traumatized for life. I need more money. The compensation package, which also included a ticket refund. Well, yeah, you're going to refund the ticket was offered in an email, a, a compensation package offering a ticket refund. I did not go to where I wanted to go. The door popped off and we came right back to Portland. So yeah, I'm going to get a refund from my ticket. Even if they put me on a plane again to go to my destination, I still want a refund because the door popped off and we came back and we probably were there for a while and the other airplanes may have been grounded right away. So nah, yeah, give me a refund on that. That's just, that's not part of the compensation package. Like I'm not going to sign anything to get a free ticket anyway. So this was offered in the email to, um, for passengers on Alaska Airlines flight 1282 after Friday night's fiasco. The Wall Street Journal reported Daniel Lawrence, a partner at the Seattle-based um, Street Matter, uh, Stirrit Matter firm who is representing Alaska Airlines passengers in a separate case, told the Post that those aboard flight 1282 could seek legal action for emotional distress. As a moral matter, 1500 per passenger for what could have been a death experience and might even be described as a near-death experience, is inadequate. They clearly will have a claim for emotional distress that was inflicted upon them, Lauren said, adding he would not be surprised if lawsuits began rolling in as early as tomorrow. Oh, look, man, as soon as a plane touches down, yeah, as soon as a plane touched down, a hey, lawyer, like, what would what, what we doing? <laughs> you saw the news? Yo, what, what, what's, what's going on? What's, what's the next course of action? Immediately. As soon as I call my people, my mom, papa, whatever, say I'm okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. My next call, I'm, I'm on the phone. It is what it is. Okay? Now, some are going to say, oh, man, you're just trying to get paid, you greedy. Well, look, they put out an email almost right away talking about, okay, here's a settlement amount and sign off on this. And if you sign off on this and you can't sue us. So, look, it's business. If they're going to offer me that right away, right after the plane lands right after I get home safely, then yeah, I'm going to be on the phone with the lawyer immediately the same way that they were on the phone with their lawyers immediately. What's the difference? As soon as this happened, Spirit or whoever, Alaska Airlines, pardon me, Alaska Airlines got on the phone with their lawyers right away to figure out how they should go forward. And then they probably got paperwork signed up, drafted up, and a dollar amount, and they send it to you in the email almost instantly. It says, okay, here's 1500 sign this, no lawsuit. That's what happened, in my opinion. But I digress. I've actually heard from one of the passengers this morning who was interested in talking to me about the incident. Passengers aboard flight 1282 from Portland, Oregon, were left staring into the abyss of the starry night sky and beyond on Friday after a door plug burst from the port side of the fuselage at about 16,000 feet into the flight's initial ascent. In the mayhem that ensued, passengers' belongings were sucked through the opening, oxygen mask dropped from the ceiling, and a young boy's shirt was ripped from his body and flung into the night as flight attendants implored everybody to keep their seatbelts fastened. This is really flowery language. I like that little passage right there. That's like something you read in the book, okay? Oh, you're staring into the starry night. That, that was very well written. Shout out to New York Post. One of my favorite uh, publications. And you see, I mean, look at that. That's a really crazy view of the whole situation. I mean, that is a mess, a, a complete mess. And again, thank God nobody was sitting right next to the actual door. You got somebody that could have been sitting right there. Imagine what they were going through if that happened. And then their oxygen mask, can you even put that on if it's right there by the door and force could be sucking it out of the actual plane i mean that's a mess a total mess because if somebody was sitting right here seatbelt or no seatbelt it was going to be a bad day it was going to be a bad 25 minutes or however long it took for the door to pop off and then for them to re revert back to the airport and land the flight returned to portland to make an emergency landing at, and all 171 passengers were deplaned with no issues with no serious is injuries reported but many have been left haunted by the fear they felt during the ordeal. Quote, we literally thought we were going to die. Passenger, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, but a passenger said who was seated one row behind the ragged hole told the Wall Street Journal. 
Another passenger, Emma Vu, posted a TikTok video sharing screenshots of texts she sent her parents during the flight asking them to please pray for me. I don't want to die. Oh, yeah. Look, that kind of stuff going on. You see these pictures, texts talking about I don't want to die, wearing oxygen mask, $1,500, man, please. $1,500, I'm at 1.5. We could start at 1.5 M's and we can go from there. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to everyone aboard the plane who landed safely, got home to your loved ones, friends, family, whatever. Shout out to you guys. But Alaska Airlines, 1500 I know some will take the money and some probably already have. Maybe they don't want to go through trying to find a lawyer. Maybe they don't want to take a long time because you're talking about a lawsuit like this. It probably won't be settled quickly. That money that you get from spirit. I mean, pardon me. I can say in spirit, Alaska, that money will probably be given to you pretty quickly, but a lawsuit a little bit longer. But Hey, if it's me again, I don't need the 1500 right away. I don't mind waiting two years to get paid $1.5 million or whatever. I'm going to get paid from this whole ordeal and I deserve it 100%. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you, do you think the dollar amount that Alaska airlines is offering passengers aboard the door plug flight is enough? $1,500. Is that enough to compensate or should it be a larger amount? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. If I was on the plane Again, I'm calling my loved ones when I land to tell them I'm okay and everything's all right. But the very next call, I'm on the phone. Hey, let's, what are we doing, lawyer? Okay, what's, what's the next step? How much are we going to get? How long is it going to take? How much do you need? You want to get paid on the front or the back? What are we doing? That's my call because, again, Alaska Airlines had no problem calling their lawyers right away. So I'm doing the same thing. You're in business, so am I. Simple as that. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.